I want to talk with you about the different styles of D loops and how these different ways of either configuring your D loop, tying your knocking points, and the combination of both can affect your accuracy, but also what are the causes and the effects of the different ones, okay? I get a lot of questions about this, so here is what I've learned through my experiences and also what I know about these different configurations when it comes to tuning, okay? So this first set I have right here is a tied knocking point under the arrow but a D loop around that. So the top of the arrow is against the D loop, but you do have that knock underneath. So for a lot of time, people enjoyed this way of tying it because it actually helped keep arrows down on launcher blades, especially target archers that were shooting on just a lizard tongue like this, where the amount of downward pressure you have of that arrow greatly affects not only the accuracy, but also sometimes the headache and the struggle if you're having that arrow constantly wanna jump off that little lizard tongue. So this style here, because there's more spacing underneath, think of it like this. If you're shooting a recurve bow or a trad bow and you try to put one finger above and two finger under, underneath, as you draw back, you can easily still kind of lift that arrow or turn it off. Whereas if you put all your fingers underneath that arrow, then you have more downward pressure because of that triangle, you have more downward pressure on the arrow and it holds it on the shelf better. So this style here will hold it on the shelf better. However, what I don't like about this particular system is one of the most wearable things that we have in archery is going to be your D loop. The more you practice, the more you shoot, the more this thing is going to wear out, especially the more you invert your hand. The flatter you are with the hand held, the less wear and tear you're going to have on a D loop. The more you invert, the more that weird angle is going to start to chew through the D loop on one side. So in this case here, if you had to remove this D loop to then put on a new one, if you don't get it exact, then what happens is you could change your knock height and then have to slightly change your needle, change your scale, or even change your tune. Because remember, you can't have this perfectly tight because if it's perfectly tight, once you draw back, that pinch could end up lifting it off even though you have that downward pressure. So in some situations, I personally have seen, especially if someone ties this D loop incorrectly, because this D loop has to go around itself right here, you can see that the back of the knock is actually touching the D loop there, but we do have a bit of a space here in front. So you kind of have to be careful about that. You really need a D loop material that you can pinch down tight and as you're working that, you want to have a symmetrical shape all the way around that string. And that's a big reason why when I tie knocking points, I actually choose a double over and a double under so that th those ties meet themselves at the halfway point of the string on the top and then again in the bottom. And that way it's not creating one part where it's thicker and then one part where it's thinner because as you turn your string or as your string starts to stretch over time and you have to put a twist in it to get that peep rotation back, any of these gaps or variations, for example, if you don't do a double, if you just do a single tie, there's also some other knots out there. I see people promoting you to tie, but if you don't have a perfectly symmetrical knocking point that goes 360 degrees around that string looking the exact same, then what'll happen is as that string turns, it could lift a little bit, or if you've set it in the lifted position and as it turns, it could push it down. That's all sl small variations that have big effects on groups, okay? Now I'm gonna jump down here to this bottom one. The bottom one is just a single tied knocking point. This is for people who still shoot a release under the arrow. It's got good downward pressure. You have a consistent knocking point. Honestly, if you ever had to replace this knocking point itself, 
What I would probably do is I would put the arrow there. I would probably slide a little brass knock up against that arrow and kind of leave it in that place. Then remove my top knock and tie a new one in place so that I make sure my knocking position is the same. And then I can just slide that brass one off the bottom and I'm able to replace that without a problem. Now, here's the cons to this type of system. When you're clipping your release directly onto the string, you're gonna greatly increase the wear and tear on that serving. So you're gonna end up having to either tie some type of a material here for protection, or, which kind of gets a little cluttery, or you're gonna have to be replacing that center serving more often, which then leads to having to completely redo your knock sets, okay? Now another one here, this is actually what was referred to as the Clint Loopy. So Clint Freeman used to make these no, no torque loops that would just go underneath like this and it allowed the loop to turn, instead of it being this way, you could actually turn it the opposite way, which was pretty neat. So you can see that's actually turned to where it's flat, so it came out clean. However, Pulling from underneath will slightly change your anchor point. So if you tried that, your peep's going to feel a little bit off. This system did work well in a hunting situation. It's a little bit more of a struggle to load it in. This was a system that Clint really liked uh, for when he shot hinge releases. This was a neat little system. However, you have to be able to make this little D-loopy thing right here that he's got, which can kind of be a pain in the butt. And even though it had its practicality in the target world, honestly, in the hunting world, it wasn't my favorite. Now, going back to what I prefer, two tied knocks with your D-loop. The reason I really prefer this is because, again, this is the most wearable item on your bow, really. Your D-loop is gonna take the most clipping on, and obviously it's trying to come away from that jaw. So because this is gonna be replaced a lot, by having your knocking points tied above and beneath, you can either play with your draw length adjustment. If you're trying to figure out where your anchor feels the best, you can remove a D-loop, put a new one on, and you're not changing your tune because you have your knocks in place. Now, a lot of people ask, why do I like three columns of tied knocking points on the top and then four on the bottom? Because for me, that system and this bow right here is pretty worn out, but this system, the reason I like having a little bit thicker underneath is because I give myself a little of that downward pressure, but I also put the hook of your release in the correct position. So think of it like this. You have to think of this being in a straight line. When you hook your D-loop here or you hook your release on your D-loop, your D-loop is actually going to be uh, slightly, or your release hook will be slightly beneath the arrow knock. In this position, you're directly behind that arrow knock. Obviously, here and here, you're completely underneath, so you're creating much more downward pressure. So, the type of D loop, the type of spacing is all relative to how much pinch you may or may not have, the wear and tear your ability to add a twist into your string to get your peep back in the right place without having to, to worry about changing, obviously having to change this. There's a lot of pros and cons. Obviously there's tons of options. I feel like I've tried most of them over time and I keep coming back to what allows me to shoot the most, replace my D loop, have their most repetibility for pressure on a multitude of rests with a multitude of different arrow diameters. And I also get the best at, uh, accuracy, I believe, because of where the hook of my release is in relation to the straight line of that arrow knock. So there's the pros and cons to different loops, different knock configurations, Pick the one that's right for you.